Hey everyone, it's May 21st, Tuesday. You're here at the Chaos Community Weekly Call. Really happy to see everyone here. I have locked Lucy away because I'm also have the puppy here and the cats here and the guinea pigs are, it's a lot. So yes, so no Lucy today. She's out in the other room. Um, I hope everybody's having a really great week so far. It's early, I know. So there's a lot of opportunity for things to go better, maybe, or, or, or worse. I guess uh, we won't hope for that though. Here's the minutes. If you have not been here before, I think everybody here has, but I will say it again. This is a meeting that is under the chaos code of conduct, just like all of our meetings. So just keep that in mind as you interact. And again, you do not have to have your um, cameras on or your mics, like you don't have to do any of that stuff. You can just chat with us on the side. You can do other things while you're here. That's totally fine. We don't care. <laughs> Um, all right, so the first thing is um, I am out till Friday, uh, just in case people are pinging me and I don't respond, that's why. Um, and I think I might owe a couple people some things, so I will do that before I leave, but um, yes, I will be out until Friday. So just a point of a point of note, if you ping me, I will not respond right away. So um, what is next here? I owe you money, <sighs> as if. Good luck getting that, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> I do not have the deep pockets. I have very shallow pockets. So yeah, <laughs> you can, you're gonna be waiting for a while on that. Um, the uh, next item on our agenda is this, um, I created this form because our community is growing so quickly and I just cannot be in all the spaces all the time. And I'm afraid I'm gonna miss important contributions to our project or that there are amazing people who are doing a lot of work behind the scenes um, that don't get the recognition that they maybe should. So I created this form. If you know someone that is doing a great job um, and you just like to see them highlighted as, or you wanna learn more about them, or you just think that they're awesome, um, feel free to just fill this in and we will get them on the list. So, and just because they're nominated, I will reach out to them, but does it mean that they will agree to participate? Because we do ask them, you know, uh, you know, tell us about yourself, tell us about what you do at Chaos, um, advice for newcomers. And if, you know, someone's not willing to or, or doesn't feel comfortable sharing that information, that's totally fine. So just want to throw that out there that um, a nomination it is still up to that person whether or not they accept. So, Do we so have a page where we uh, have like links to everyone who's been the chaotic of the week? No, I want to do that. And I also want to include, so we've been doing this for a while now and we have had some really great advice for newcomers that we need to, I would love to collect somewhere. Um, Cause we ask every single chaotic of the week if you have advice for newcomers to open source. And there's some great, great, great advice in there, especially, um, yes, it is time for a chaotic of the week coffee table book. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, maybe we can put it in a repo somewhere um, and just add files. I don't know. What do you all think? I love that idea. Where is all of it right now? Like when you write these? nowhere spread out all over. I mean, they always go in the um, Chaos Weekly. So mm -hmm. that's where they are right now on the website, just buried in the Chaos Weeklies. Yeah. Um, sometimes we pull it out and put it on LinkedIn. We started doing that. We used to have them all in one place when we had discourse, but we don't have that anymore. So um, yeah, right now they're just kind of buried in all the, chaotic, or the Chaos Weeklies. So not where do you write them? Just in Google Docs? No, I write them in the, um, in the uh, weekly. The in WordPress. So you just it right in there. Yeah, yeah. And then I copy paste and put it in Slack too. I see. So. But I could easily just pull them out and um, yeah, Eddie Inc is saying a page in the website. Let's put that on the list too, maybe. We could we could do that and pull from the repo as we do on our website so often. So yeah. we could do both. Why not both? Um, well, it's probably a folder in the community repo rather than a separate repository. True. A folder. We could um, do a page on the website and then link to each of the things. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Cool. If anybody has any other ideas as we go, just drop them in here or 
shot them out and we'll add them on. Thanks. Okay, the next one was an um, item from last week that Alice had dropped in that we didn't get a chance to really talk about. So I don't know uh, if there's anything to add to this, Alice, that you want to talk about, or this is just a reminder for people. Uh, it's basically just a reminder in case anyone's not aware um, that the Linux Foundation does have a, a fairly sizable fund for sending people to its events who would not otherwise be able to attend or represent a marginalized group. So, um, and they will pay for travel, so they pay for airfare, they'll pay for hotel, they won't pay for food and like other bits and pieces, but they pretty much nearly cover everything and you, you should be able to get a free ticket as well at the same time. So it's a really good um, scheme, it's a very, it's worth a lot of money to you if you want to go, that's how I ended up going to Osna, which was from the UK to Seattle, so it's not just for local people, they will fly you halfway across the world, so I mean it's amazing really. I. I've been twice, but they won't give you this. They won't give you it in. They won't give you multiple in short space of time. So you do have to pick the one you want to go to. I tried two years in a row, and I was only able to go to one. Alice, did you have a a talk that they asked for? No, no, just as an attendee. It's okay. literally just to get people there who wouldn't otherwise. If your employer won't send you, or if you're currently not working, or um. Even if your employer kind of could send you potentially, but you're not really like on the list for your work, and if you are, if you do, if you are part of an underrepresented group, then they will often just. You so know, they don't they, ask a lot of questions. You have to just put a, a you just have to put a short paragraph together. It's okay. Not, it's not too hard. And then do you pay and then get reimbursed? Yes, that is that is how it works. Um, and when I went, I mean, I put mine on a credit card, so um, I think it, I think I'll get the reimbursement before the credit card hits. Not totally sure. So obviously, cash flow is to be considered. Um, it takes a little while for it to get approved. So I found that my costs had gone up since my amount was approved. So I decided to just like follow that cost. But when I came back, I said hey, it went up, and they said, no problem, we'll pay for it. So it was quite flexible. Thanks for sharing that, Alice. That's really great to know. Does anybody have any other questions that Alice maybe could answer? Maybe, or maybe. What, what's that, Matt? A link. Oh, a link. Yeah, that'd be helpful. We'll track that down. Awesome, thank you. Um, I think the links kind of, they might go um, conference by conference, but I'd have to check. But if you just Google Linux Foundation Events Scholarship or something, I think you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. okay, you've got it, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Anything else on this before we move on? Okay. We'll move on. Um, I put this on here. We did not get a chance to talk about this last week and I don't see Mary Blessing on here today. So Mary Blessing and I are building this out and we did share this update in the DEI working group this uh, last week. So we just wanted to also bring it here for more eyes on it. Uh, this is something that's new for chaos that we've not done before and we've loosely uh, built this off of the CNCF ambassador program um, and a few others, which we have listed at the bottom of here. This um, doc is a little bit messy. Uh, so it's kind of got a lot of uh, to be figured out. <laughs> it's a lot of TBDs, um, specifically with regard to our own um, metrics and evaluation, like how we would figure out how, if it's being successful or not, um, and like what things we wanna maybe measure uh, this is what we're trying to do is just increase our user community, increase the number of community um, contributors in the community, um, and then, of course, the tools and, and just really broadening the awareness of, of chaos in general. Um, we also are not sure we talked about in the DEI working group, a bit of feedback was this um, under responsibilities. We have these things that people can do or we would like them to do. 
we don't have a minimum number of activities uh, that the number of activities or, or the number of things that we should require from ambassadors is something that is a little bit tricky, I think, to really um, nail down. But I think we have landed on that we want to put some something in there because people can either go, you know, one way and, and do all the things all the time, which you don't need to do all that, you know, if you want, I guess you can, but we don't want people to feel like that's what's expected of them. Um, but we also don't want people to do like one thing for over the year, like we want a little bit more activity. So it's somewhere kind of in the middle. And I don't really know how we figure out what that level is. So if anybody has any thoughts on that, um, or what like a good range would be, what would be reasonable. Um, and, and we do have things that don't require travel or attendance at, at conferences, if that's something that people can't do. Um, we do have a lot of like content creation, um, you know, just answering questions, things like that. So I'm going to stop talking and let you all chat about this for a second. We had talked, so a couple things. One, we had talked about kind of that evaluation thing that you're talking about, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it, like maybe, I don't know, would you plan or you or a, a group of people plan on meeting with the ambassadors like on a yearly basis, I think it says? Yeah, I think so. Um, we may do more of a like bi-monthly get all the ambassadors together kind of meeting also. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can kind of touch base with them and, and encourage them along the way because I don't want to just like wait for a year and then come to someone and just be like, hey, you didn't do enough. You know, sure. I, I want it to be more of a, a, a process and a, you know, along the way. And we are kind of learning about this uh, as we go. So yeah, it's going to it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. Mary Blessing and I both are going to uh, be the, the leads on this. Um, I think Mary Blessing is going to do most of it, but I am there as a support. Um, so we also want to have like calendars for them, working with the communications team. Like there's some other coordination with other bits of this that we're going to do to help the ambassadors learn of opportunities and make sure they have enough opportunities also. So that's something when we're talking about like how many things do we want them to do that's another piece of it if we don't give them anything to to start from that's not very helpful either so i'm, I'm wondering like if you were going to do evaluations with you know the 12 or six ambassadors that we have um that on that maybe there is a yearly review with each person and then um Sometimes you can just ask the person how they think they did. And honestly, people are strangely honest about <laughs> their own evaluations on, on how, you, like you can ask students, you know, kind of what grade they think they should get in the class. And it's weird how they actually answer. <laughs> like <laughs> They don't all say A's. Um, so maybe that could just be a document where you can have a, a nice evaluative conversation like some people may just say, I, I think I did really well and I did these couple things and I think I did a really, I think I was really a great contributor. And maybe that's great. <laughs> you know, Mary Blessing, are you in that year long review? Or like, you know, this, thanks for doing these things. I think this is wonderful. And others might say, I did these 12 things. And you're like, that's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's no minimum criteria. It's more just about the people self reflecting and, and you kind of being part of that process with them. So um, I love that. And, and I think what you're saying also is we just leave it to them to decide what's reasonable for them mm -hmm. as far as like the, the number and the level of yeah. advocacy they're doing. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense, actually. I'm just going to put that up here. Um, we already have a okay, comment. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they haven't done anything, I think that that's. Um, I would say that, like, maybe you could ask for a document ahead of the meeting, like even just a half a page. <laughs> like, could you 
just kind of summarize what you did over the last year. Yeah. The, the document to talk to on that review. Yeah. I like that a lot. And I don't think we, Mary Blessing and I, we, neither one of us want this to be like uh, um, a, an adversarial thing or, or anything like that. I mean, really, we're just trying to help uh, chaos. The awareness of chaos really is the whole point of this. So if somebody is not able to do this, then that's cool. That's fine. <laughs> like, it's not, a, it's not that, it's not that deep. Like, we don't want it to be this, you know, I don't know. It, it does it okay so here's a question as you're reading this document does it seem like it is a very formal thing because we're going for a level of formality at some point but not like uh we don't think we need to be to the level of cncf we're not that big we're not that it's not that deep so if people have that kind of feedback or feeling as they're reading this is like oh man this is this is tough like i don't know if i want to do this i don't know if i could like we want it to be very approachable, I guess, and um, accessible for people. Maybe if you call it like go to the top, like uh, advocacy plan. I'm thinking like calling it guidelines somewhere. You know, like these are <laughs> as opposed to requirements or something. Guidelines is a nice soft piece of language that makes scary language less scary. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. Because there's just some like nuance that we want to keep it chaosy, you know, but it's kind of hard to put that in words sometimes. Elizabeth, can you go back to the, the top? Yeah. You said to equip the open source community with the tools and resources needed to measure and improve their health, contributing to a more sustainable and vibrant open source. Uh, what I understand what we mean here, but usually some communities will really stay communities. They will not grow into an ecosystem. Uh, that's fair. I think we're just meaning open source in general, just the general. Yeah, so I think I umbrella. think that ecosystem there might be a bit confusing in this okay. context. We just keep community or open source community is fine. Because a project that really functions practically well as a as a project doesn't need to grow as an open source ecosystem. Then the idea overall is a great idea. Like what Matt was saying, ambassadors are people who go out to preach the to spread the word. So like uh, I'm just supporting what Matt was saying. It's less formal. It's an outward mission. So they go out to join other communities to spread the word of what Kios is doing in their own capacities. They don't have to be technical people. They are people from different backgrounds, contribution who come in from diverse uh, perspectives and the likes. So it's a, it's a great program. So if somebody is, let's say, from the marketing side, if somebody is more from the communication side, like journalists, and any other aspect, this is an opportunity for them to tell the world of ecosystem what Kios is doing and how value, what kind of value for the values that they could we, we could bring to enrich that space. Okay, that's fair. I just added some words here, but I don't know if um, just like generally open source. Does that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We keep it there. Okay. Great feedback. Thank you, Armstrong. Okay. I think this is supposed to be a number three also. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> what's going on? Okay, we'll figure this out. Anyway, 
Um, okay. Thanks, everybody. I, I'm telling you, I cannot figure out, yeah, formatting and, you know. All right, I appreciate that. If, if you, again, have other comments you want to add in later, feel free. It's an open document. Just drop in whatever. Um, yeah. Any kind of feedback or thoughts you have on any of that is great. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we have a communications working group reboot. Uh, Alice is going to be um, helping that effort. So, um, Alice, do you want to talk about this a little bit, this meeting? Is Alice still here? Oh, I think we lost Alice. Okay. She's not here. Okay. So, yeah, uh, there's a message in the general channel as well that kind of explains a little more about what is going to happen at that meeting. The, the goals of that meeting. So if you are a communications person or a marketing or branding, any of that stuff, you want to get on board with that. Um, yeah, you should come to that meeting if you're able to. So the again, the details are in the general channel of our Slack. And if somebody needs a link to that specifically, we can certainly drop that in here. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to this. There's a lot here. So <clears> let's <throat> talk about this. This is me. So we've been talking a lot about ISO, like setting ISO standards. And so um, there have just been a lot of different conversations that have been occurring in different channels and kind of in different working groups sometimes. So I spent some time talking with Divya this morning about um, ISO standards because Divya had talked about um, kind of working. Do you remember this conversation, like working with folks in Asia? around the open chain with the open chain group and if you're not familiar open chain has done iso standards work before so shane coughlin who some of you i'm sure know i think has led a lot of this work so okay so so she and i were talking this morning and just there was a lot of like parts and i'm i was thinking there have been a lot of different conversations going on so what i'm trying to do here is bring together the conversation around iso work so that it's not kind of all over the place and we can continue to use this kind of this list here of things to help organize our work. And so right now we had talked about um, you setting ISO standards around metrics models, not metrics. And so there is a deeper conversation around that in the metrics model meeting, but that was kind of where we had landed. And these were some of the metric models that seemed to be candidates for turning into ISO standards at that top list. This is by no means the definitive list. And Divya had also suggested that some of the folks who are on um, the open chain, I think Japan call, are there are a couple metric models that they are kind of using with, <clears throat> excuse me, within their organization. I don't know if we've documented them, but it might be useful if um, we could identify what those models are from that group and then have those as candidates for turning into ISO standards. There seems to be, at least from my perspective, some value for companies to be deploying metrics or metrics models that have an ISO standardization behind them. I don't know why that would be the case, but that seems to be the case. So like a company would say, you know, internally we're using this metric model and it is an ISO standard. I think that might put some internal conversations to rest more quickly is my guess. So anyway, I just wanted to bring those up. That list might change. The next is the existing documents that frame that ISO path. So there's a mural board here, which kind of talks about how we would think about um, the ISO standards and kind of where they would, um, where they would fit. In a, in a model or a diagram, a larger diagram. And of course, like as we deploy metric models, like on that first list, like one metric model may, may exist way over there on the right hand side, you know, to attend to one of those particular items. You know what I mean? So like, this is a large look at all the metric models, or I'm sorry, all the, the uh, standards that could be created around models. Um, and the five that I have listed would only fulfill part of this diagram. Make sense? This is like a very general diagram and the models would be a few things that would 
help specify components of this. All right, if you go back. Yeah, this is what we went over in the metrics model meeting that was most recent. Correct. Yeah. correct. And then if you go back, the literature review is, this is a table that supports that model that you just saw with literature that says, this is why we would include these components in our ISO mapping. So some folks, a couple of folks at a university in China have been doing a lot of really great work here to identify existing literature that provides support for that model that was developed earlier. That it's not just like off the top of your head kind of model. All right, so these two documents go together. The first one is just a visualization. The second is kind of this literature support for that Miro visualization. So that's what these two documents are. <clears throat> All right. So then the people who have expressed an interest, and yeah, this is not a final list either, but Yahui has expressed um, interest. interest. Uh, Rui Zhao, Rui Kao is, I think, the student. Um, Ming Hui is a professor in China who have helped put together this Miro board and list. Uh, Daniel has expressed interest, Sean, Georg, Jonathan. So there are a lot of people who are very interested in, in kind of getting this work done. So I just think it was yeah, important I'll, to decide who those people were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just mentioned when uh, Daniel and Yahoo and I were together in Beijing last December, we talked with Shane, who was also there, about oh. um, ISO standards and, and chaos. And I think that's great that he's involved. Perfect. Well, Divya is going to reach out to Shane. So I don't think he's involved quite yet, but he does seem like, to your point, you had a conversation with him. I think Divya has talked to him as well. Like he has an interest and we just haven't kind of formalized that. Yeah. And he's very organized around this kind of standard thing. That's sort of his, that's his thing. So that would be great. He's incredibly be... organized, at least from my perspective in general. <laughs> so... Yeah. 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 Fair. Fair. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely on this. So the people who I think can help in kind of paving this path, I think we have a lot of parts. I, sometimes I feel like we just don't know how to get this off the ground. You know, like what, what do we, what's our first step? Mm -hmm. um, and I have honestly, I have tried to connect with folks at JDF time and time again, the Joint Development Foundation with very oh, little yeah. success. And I know maybe you have, maybe you'll have more success, Sean. So, I doubt it, but. I'm trying because Yahui and Daniel were pretty keen about it in the last metric model meeting. Yeah. So I, there's no, this isn't a knock on the JDF. I'm sure they're very busy with many, many things. I yeah. just, in order to get this moving, I, there is a certain amount of advice that I need or that this group needs to actually get this thing rolling. And so Divya, I asked Divya this morning if she, she would be willing to kind of, you know, organize this effort around ISO standards and kind of be a, a point person for this list that you're seeing. And she had expressed interest in doing this and thought this would be really cool. So she's gonna be reaching out to Shane just to kind of maybe help formalize that and see if Shane wouldn't have an interest in organizing a call or providing some insight, whatever it might be, but trying to organize this work in a more systematic way than, than I think has occurred to this point. There have been a lot of great things as you see here, but I think we need to pack package all of this together. Yeah, Jonathan, did you have a comment or? No, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to unmute. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. I just saw you unmute. So, um, so I will, there is one other thing too. You know, I think there are gonna be times when we have to um, like get our metrics models into ISO standard form. Again, I don't know what that means, but I've heard this several times. We do, I, I do think that I can identify some funds that would help in that regard too. So there are people who do this professionally, <laughs> from what I understand, like you give them a document that's not in an ISO form and they will do the tedious work to help <laughs> at least bridge it out of the current form into something that is more ISO standardy. So I, again, I think I can identify funds that would help support that process as well. So does anybody have any questions on this? I'm really just spending time trying to organize this, yeah. this ISO conversation. Yeah, my, I think we had a discussion last time when this, you introduced this, and I think I'm still concerned about, are you just proposing a kind of uh, 
a framework, just a theoretical framework, or you are actually, is it actually being a, a standard, like a reference uh, where you have a kind of, you know, like usually when they talk about these frameworks for or these IOS, uh, IOS standards, they have test cases where they have implemented to have like guideline, concrete guidelines. Yep, this is not that Armstrong. So I think okay. the way the two ways I've heard about it, and again, I am not an expert on this, is process standards and document standards. And we are the document standard. So this okay. is a st standard document and the processes by which this is deployed, this meaning the metric model, is not what we are standardizing. Okay. And within that should really be made clear from the documentation up fair. front. Very fair. Yep. And I we can I think we should just put this in this list right now too. That this is about document standards, not process standards. So thanks for that. Yeah. I have a quick question. So because the documents that we have would be the reference that people will go by, what would be, and maybe we don't even know the answer to this yet, what would be the process for us revising a metric model? Like say we come up with a different metric and we want to add it or take one out or change. Like that seems now that that's going to be very difficult to do if it's an ISO standard. Likely, and I don't have an answer to that. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Sean, go ahead. I was just going to suggest that the way that stuff like this is probably going to roll is we'll issue the, once we publish the ISO standard, our background stuff may continue to change at a detailed level. And whenever we may update our metric model more frequently than we update the ISO standard that it supports. So that's my, my observation about how stuff like this often goes. So when we, so when we, when we do this, whatever we have at that point for this document, like it's pretty locked in for a while, right? Is that fair? We have maybe a yearly eval. Yeah. Okay. The five that we have or six that okay. we have. Yeah, because the whole point of a standard is that there's enough stability that folks can, you know, form their processes to it, right? I think it will help um, because a lot, not a lot, some of our changes come from us evolving and the the um, templates that we use as we're, we're talking about doing now with our metrics. So if we're going on a template that's kind of not uh, like out of our hands, that we're just following that template of the ISO standard, this is how a document should be written, then I think that at least we'll take that piece away <laughs> from what we what we change, because it is sometimes structurally, not necessarily content, but structurally. So that will definitely help. Yeah. Well, the beautiful part is we really don't know what that translation looks like yet. So right. stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. What other questions do we have for Matt or Sean or anyone else who is familiar with this? So, Are there meetings or just this hap these conversations happen at metrics models? Everything has been happening in really the metric model meeting, um, but it has been happening like in some Slack channels as well. It was okay. I mean, it's, it was like an early, you know, very, very early conversation. So it's not surprising that the conversations would occur in a variety of different spots. Or like as Sean pointed out, some of them were like at conferences, you know, where you meet people and so all that I'm trying to do here is just bring all of that together so that we can kind of refer to this list over and over again. Do we want to put this list somewhere not in our uh, meeting minutes? Like, but as I was saying that probably some sort of, you know, um, Google Doc that could be shared consistently. Okay. Is somebody working on that? I, I just did this this morning. So, okay. And then thanks to Divya for, you know, expressing interest in helping organize this work. You know, Divya is in 12-hour um, different time zone or something like that. And I don't, does anybody know where Shane lives? Does he live in? 
He lives in Japan. Does he? Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to have to kind of sort out time zones because if Divya is having conversations with Shane and if there's the open chain Japan meeting where some of this is occurring, so we're just going to have to kind of um, structure on communication will just have to be thought about a little bit as well. well I, I say he lives in Japan and he does, but he also travels a great deal. So, <laughs> okay. So Matt, are you thinking there might be like an extra meeting just about this topic at some point? It, it seems like there's going to be enough work that is going to require some sort of, um, if not a meeting, some sort of explicit way to coordinate this work as opposed to just like an agenda item on mm -hmm. models every two weeks. Yeah. Okay, well, if that... Sorry, is... Elizabeth. Oh, go ahead. Like, giving the diverse version of the contributors, can you also make it a sync, like people working and the different documentations, even before they are meeting, if you guys decide to meet after every uh, fortnight, they should have some way of collaborating offline. For example, if you have some great thoughts and you don't have to wait two weeks before you bring it down, you can uh, drop it in. Might be Sean can take a look and give some feedback. Then by the time you guys are meeting, at least the conversation should be ongoing. So maybe there should be some kind of channel that can keep track of this discussion. It's an interesting way of uh, working with these things because the moment you keep out of your thoughts, the idea might disappear and you know things are moving fast. Um, it looks like Matt had to drop off for a second. Um, so I will just speak to that. I think you're absolutely right. And I think in the it, until there is a separate whole Slack channel meeting, all of that put together. I think probably in the metrics models meeting would be the place to drop those thoughts. I would I would imagine. And then yeah. once, once okay. um, Matt has this Google Doc together, then also comments on that too. I would imagine. Yeah, that's, that's where great. all this discussion has been happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're not in there and you want to join this conversation for anybody, that's where you should be. So you should join that channel. All right, Matt had to drop off. Um, so I don't know uh, if anybody has any other questions. I don't know if Sean can answer for any other comments. Yeah, if there's other questions, I can at least make a note of them. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We have seven minutes left and we have a couple other things to talk about. Um, Sean, you wanna talk about Augur release 0 0.70? Yes. Just going to make the announcement that we released another version of Augur that mm -hmm. stabilized a number of the ways that we collect large volumes of data. There's another major release that's currently being tested that uh, does a much better job of incrementally gathering data that so we only go back and get the things that have been updated, which seems like you should do that from the start, but believe it or not, you don't need to be efficient to be successful when you're hitting APIs. But at the scale we're at right now, we're working more towards the efficiencies. And um, yeah, that, that next release will be even better for scale than the current one. So yay. Yay, Augur team. Thank you, everyone who contributed. Yeah, that's really great. Is there a change log or anything that you need to share or? Oh, I can. Yeah, I'll drop, I'll drop that in the notes. OK, just in case people are curious yeah. as to exactly what changed. Yep. Stand by. I'll put that in the notes while you move on. Okay. Um, I think Georg may have put this next one on. Is Georg still with us? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Uh, so one of the things we've done with the Chaos Cast is to send a personal thank you note to guests that would like to receive it, and we send out postcards. Um, I haven't done that in a while. And now that the podcast has grown and Alice is helping with the, with the podcast, I thought it's time to update the postcard. And so I gave it to the um, Chaos 
Africa Design Group and ask them for help. And so this link here points to the Slack that where the latest iteration is visible. So I'm happy to share that. This is moving forward and feedback and input is welcome on the Slack message, channel, thread, whatever it's called. Um, thank you, Georg, for sharing that. Is there um, a Figma or anything that we can click on? I'm not clicking on a Slack link because I don't know what's going to come up on my on my screen. So I'm a little <laughs> afraid to click on Slack because who knows? Uh, yeah. The only thing I have is the PDF that was shared in this. OK, OK, perfect. So everyone can on your own go to the Slack and look at the PDF. Click it. I'm afraid to all my okay. all my slacks will open. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's a free for all. It, it worked for me. Did it? Uh huh. Okay. Do you want to share your screen then, Matt? Share your slacks. <laughs> <laughs> share my slacks. Share your slacks. <laughs> it didn't come out quite right. I'm not sure that's what it, I'm not sure you mean what you think you mean. <laughs> the second Princess Bride reference today. So. <laughs> There can never be too many. Okay, I just want low tech and pasted it in. All Yay. right. <laughs> so nobody has to click on anything embar potentially embarrassing. I'm always just afraid like something's gonna pop up. I, I yes, yes. No, totally get that. One time it happened to me, and that uh, from then on, I yes, my daughter sent me something inappropriate, <laughs> and I'm meeting, <laughs> I was recording, and it popped up on. I was like, oh my god. Um, I didn't click on her link, but I knew it was gonna be bad. So yeah, I. Hesitant to, yes. Uh, this looks great. Aw. Are we doing the poker chips still, Georg? No, we decided to stop doing that and only send a postcard because international mail, the feedback I heard is the poker chip sometimes doesn't get through customs or delays the mail or makes it oddly sized. So just a postcard, not even an envelope. I, I can oh, tell you that my, I got stopped at security by my chips because the way they're rolled, it looks like three sticks of dynamite. <laughs> I remember that. I, I had some very attentive TSA agents when I went through security with those. <laughs> How, how are you going to enclose stickers in a postcard? Uh, I am not. Does it still say stickers in here? It does. It does. Yeah. OK, yeah, we need to change that. That will be a whole lot easier, I think, to just pop a stamp and send the thing on. Yes, agreed. A plus. Well, thank you, everybody, for everything. Y'all are awesome. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I won't be here. So again, don't ping me, or you can, and I'm not going to respond. <laughs> yeah. Have a great week. I will see you all here same time next, same time next week, same place. Have a good one, everybody. Bye, everybody.